Mr. President. Hey, how much do you do? Thank you very much for uh, well, giving the offer. Well, listen. Appreciate it. My daughter Kimberly. Hello. Hello. My daughter Karen. Hello. Hello. And Christine. Hi. Hello, Karen. And my wife Frank. Hi. Hi. Well, I think we ought to get a group of family picture here. Okay. So, uh, why don't you get between us? Okay. Then why don't I can have one of the girls one or two of you go down on that side? Here we are. That's as close to the middle as we can get, isn't it? Thank you. Well, thank you. Drop that scratch off. Oh, thank you very much. And you've got to have some souvenirs. Now, wait a minute. That's really. Yeah, Rick, that's, that's Rick really is for the big one. And that's Rick. Rick. Oh, this, this is for you. He's got all the muscles, right? Yes. This <laughs> and uh, these are just souvenirs so we won't forget us. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. There. Good. Thanks very much. Well, thank listen, for everything, and I know you're not leaving us. You're just with the service, all right? Preparing to ride a horse. Oh, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> all right. Well, good to see you all. Not a place for that. We're anxious to get on with the meeting. 
understandings about the United States' role in the Persian Gulf. And to that end, many of you have made strong public statements making it clear that, in fact, we do have vital and compelling national interests in that region. So while we may have some disagreements on the execution of our commitment, I think there's broad and bipartisan agreement on the foundation of our policy. The controversy which erupted after the Stark tragedy whoever is focusing attention almost exclusively upon military actions and dangers uh, that uh, threats uh, to these objectives, or threatens these objectives. And preoccupation with military issues has obscured, I think, our main purpose, which is to seek peace and stability by diplomatic means. We must stay the course and put the Iranians on the defensive, not by threatening them militarily, but by a major diplomatic offensive passing a United Nations Security Council resolution and getting real support for it. But that doesn't mean retreating from our commitment to help Kuwait and the other Gulf Arab states protect themselves and stand up to Iranian intimidation and to prevent Iran from establishing control over the Gulf. Our preparations for the limited role of protecting 11 new U.S. flagships are moving forward. We expect them to be completed by mid-July, at which time we plan to proceed. Our diplomatic strategy has been geared from the beginning to accelerate an end to the Iran-Iraq war and reduce the threat to the Gulf. We've been very active behind the scenes. I discussed diplomatic strategy at some length with our allies in Venice, and we're now set to make a major push for a Security Council resolution. To that end, we intend to bring about a meeting of the Security Council before mid-July, at which Secretary Schultz will represent the United States, and in preparation for that meeting, I have sent messages to all Security Council members and will also send Ambassador Dick Walters to several capitals to get their support. The UN Security Council resolution would call for an immediate ceasefire, withdrawal to international boundaries, a commission to investigate origins of the war, and negotiations on a permanent settlement. It's a balanced resolution. It's either Iraq or Iran. If either one of them reject it, we're seeking support for a second resolution which would apply an international arms embargo. The adoption of this resolution with strong international support will create a new impetus for ending the war while working for an eventual end of the war. There may also be an easing of tension and lowering of the threat in the Gulf, and this is one of our important interim objectives. We will certainly need to consult with you further after you return from the July 4th recess. By then, we'll have more details on the Security Council, the threat in the Gulf, and our plans and preparations. In the meantime, let's bear in mind that the United States must not retreat from its commitments. The Ayatollah's threats of terror cannot be seen as winning again, and the Soviets must not be allowed to increase their influence in a vacuum of our decision. And I'd like to call on Secretary Schultz and Secretary Weinberger for their comments, and so we should start with you, George. First, let me make
This is an old fashioned camera, so the position, if you move, you will be out of focus. So it's, uh, we took the liberty of it. out of the picture if he's out there. I think if we could go back to the previous... Uh, I'm going to do very, very few pictures. And these are, the flashes are more or less of this... Uh, uh, better. Uh, the flashes... Now, um, the... To have This is an old-fashioned way of shooting, but... Okay. All right, everybody looking up. This is great. Perfect. What is this wow. flash? <laughs> I'm sorry. It's someone else's flash. <laughs> <laughs> this. Okay, we have to let it stop. Just wiggle a little bit. Okay, this is pretty good. This is good. That's it. Right 
Just do a quick look. Look right here. This is okay. Why don't we get all these? Yes. Right. Okay. Here we go. Thank you. Thanks again. Thank you. 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 Th